I have been on a quest for the perfect crust. Don't get me wrong, steaks by itself is incredible. And when you get a nice hard seal, it is something almost unbeatable. At the same time, sometimes you crave for something different. And that's where you can improve on some incredible crusts. And I have done quite a few of them. And honestly, most of them are incredible. But you guys have asked me to try one ingredient that it's the best one of them all. And that would be pretzels. Now there's something very special about this snack. It is crunchy, salty, it always has an incredible mail reaction that's why it's so nice golden brown and the best part is that the ingredients are pretty straightforward and sometimes when you take a closer look you even have a little bit of char at least to me this is the perfect snack however is it gonna make a crust of a steak incredible well we're about to find out right now because everything starts out with steaks as you can see I have three beautiful New York strips they are choice they do have a nice marbling and most importantly they are one and a half inches thick always look for thicker steaks now before putting a crust I must season them. For that, I went with salt followed by freshly ground black pepper and garlic powder. Once they were fully seasoned, the next thing to do is to go ahead, back them up, vacuum seal them, and they are now ready for sous vide. Talking about that, I'll be cooking all of them in the same container at 135 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours. This will cook them to perfection, meaning medium rare. As that was happening, it was perfect because it allowed me time to go ahead and make an incredible side dish. And this one is super easy to make. At the same time, absolutely delicious that will please everyone. And here's how I made it. The first thing to do is to go ahead and cook up some ground beef. Into a skillet I threw in some oil and immediately some white onions. I added a little bit of salt and cooked them up until they started sweating or becoming translucent. Once that was done I immediately threw in my ground beef. Now I want to cook this through and by the way I'm using 80-20. At least for me it makes the perfect ground beef. Once it was fully cooked it was time for the seasoning. I started with a good amount of salt followed by freshly ground black pepper, garlic powder, cumin, smoked paprika and a little bit of cayenne for my good friend Chef John. Mixed everything well and combine these ingredients. As once it was fully seasoned to my tasting, it was now ready. Now using the same exact pan, I threw in some butter. Once it was fully melted, I threw in all-purpose flour. Mixed that up and cooked it until it started smelling like pie dough. Then I immediately threw in some cold milk. Mixed everything together and set my heat on high and started to whisk. As you're doing so, it's gonna start thickening up on you real quick. You see, we're doing something that it's called a bechamel sauce. Now the next ingredient might be controversial. And by the way, you can use any type of cheese you like. But I wanted to make this very simple. Simple. So in with cheese whiz I went, adding a good amount. To finish it up, all there's left to do is to go ahead and incorporate the cheese into the sauce. Because once I was done, this is what I was left with. An incredible cheese sauce that is delicious. However, we're not done yet. Because the only thing left to do is to go ahead and throw my ground beef back in there. Mix everything well, and now we have the most incredible nachos that you will ever taste. No, there's no jalapeno, there's no greens. It is straight up meat and cheese because the only thing left to do is to pair it up with your favorite chip. Today I chose Doritos, however you can use anything you like. And I'll tell you one thing, these nachos are delicious and it is ridiculously easy to make. The same goes for our pretzel steak. To do the crust, all we have to do is to throw it in a food processor, blend it on high and in the end this is what we're left with. Pretzels crumbs which is ready for some steaks. Talking about that, by this time our steaks are fully cooked. So I immediately open up the bag and put it on a cooling rack so that we can dry them up. As soon as you take it out of the bag, it does not look very appetizing. And you must pat it dry to ensure you're gonna get an incredible crust. Now since we have three steaks, this is how this experiment is gonna go down. The first one, I'm just gonna be deep frying it by itself and nothing else. The second one, on the other hand, we're gonna be using regular breadcrumbs. The third one, I'll be using the pretzel crust. And for that, I'll be using the three-step method, which is flour first, then egg wash, and then the desired crust. I'll be doing something that is called flesh frying. My oil will be at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. It will immediately cook the crust, at the same time preserving that medium rare doneness we're looking for. Because I know exactly what you're thinking. I know my steaks don't look that good right now, but watch this.
side, everybody. Here we got our beautiful steak and an incredible side dish. For the first time, I think I'm more interested in the side dish than the steaks because this, especially because it's right in front of me, has me feeling very hungry and very ready to try this. Gotta say, I went all out, everybody, as unhealthy as it gets because today it's all about the crust. I wanna know which steak has the best crust. As you can see, we got a mild crust, a medium, and a powerful crust. Enough talking, let's give it a go. Please, dig in. Now, this steak right here, which is our very first one, will definitely feel different. I don't know if you ever had it or not, Leo, but I wanna know if you can distinguish what it is. That doesn't look like a normal sous vide steak right there. I'm trying to like figure out what's going on here, but that steak looks overcooked. And I know it's sous vide, there's no way that that steak is overcooked. You're talking about because of the crust. Yeah, because it's such a darker, like crispier looking crust. I'm, I'm excited to find out what's going on. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Yummy, yummy. Yummy, yummy on my tummy, baby. <laughs> huh? <laughs> that crust is next level. I will tell you that right now. Yeah, very crispy, a little crunchy, not overcooked at all. The steak is still as tender as a normal sous vide steak, but just with a perfect crust. I see you're going with a sauce. Oh. And that made it better. <laughs> oh, that's a good sauce. <laughs> little bit of mayo, little bit of sriracha, and honey, everybody. That's it. Very easy to make, but it's not about the sauce, it's about the steak. Let's go on the crust steak. Are you guys ready? Yes. Now, here's what I will recommend whenever you're making steaks like this, everybody, do not slice the steak like I did on the cutting board. Do it on your plate because the crumbly crust will go everywhere. I'm trying to recover some of my crumbly crust over here. Enough talking, let's give it a try. Cheers. 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 Oh, very different, huh? Very crispy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I like that one too. I noticed immediately that this steak right here, the very first one, was juicier because there wasn't that crumbly crust, you know? I agree that the first one is juicier, but I'll also say I think that the second steak is more flavorful because of that crust. So out of the two that we've tried so far, I like the second steak more. I agree. I think it's more of a, like, what do you really want right now? You want a real juicy steak or you want a crispy, crust on your steak. That's fair to say, but I will say this, it's a little bit of work to make a crust like this because both of these steaks were deep fried. So if you're gonna deep fry it oh. on a regular one, might as well just go and create this one. A deep fried sous vide steak, that is surprising. Yeah. I haven't tried that before. I guess that's what you were alluding to earlier, but it's crazy because it's still so soft, even though it's freaking deep fried. Yeah. I've never said this before, but I say that is enough talking because I'm smelling all these Doritos <laughs> right in front of me go, and Leo. I cannot wait. We need to try this side dish right now. Please go. They go. Yes. Uh, they, wait, wait. Make you, sure you do a nice you, dunk. You got, okay. That's what I was waiting Don't for. Don't break the Doritos, please. Is that enough? Yo, you guys got to see their faces on that. I saw Guga's eyes widen and light up when I'm I like, that. oh boy, this boy is, uh, thank God you're not lactose intolerant. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> go dig in. Don't even wait, Leo. Tell us. We want to know. True? Yes, please. Dig in. Cheers, guys. Uh, mm, there you go. Oh my God. Oh, come on. Oh my God, you have it. You have it. Let me get another one. It's such a blast of flavor and textures. It's cheesy, it's gooey, it's a little bit crumbly because of the ground beef, yeah. and crunchy because of the Dorito, plus the dust of the Dorito. It's powdery too, like all your bases are covered. So many different flavors, so many different textures. I freaking love that. You know why I wanted to make this side dish? Mm. Every time I make a video, there's always a comment saying, oh, you always say your side dishes are so easy to make, and then I do a bunch of different steps. <laughs> there's not a lot of steps here, everybody. Super Bowl should be coming up soon. I think you guys should honestly try this. Let's dig in on the last one because I'm <laughs> curious. All right, let's go. I really want to know which one is better, if it's going to be that one or the previous one. As you can see, this crust is more powerful. Yeah, it looks powerful. It looks like there's like almonds or some type of like... Yeah, it does look like that. Yeah, it yeah, looks yeah. weird. Trust me, it is not almond. It is one of your favorite things to eat, Leo. Yeah, but I'm not going to tell you. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Oh, that is not almonds. No, that is amazing. Super crusty. Mm -hmm. It's like a crunch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This one was a crisp. Mm -hmm. This is a crunch. Mm -hmm. Me like it. You know what it is? Can't really taste what it is, no. It's pretzel. Pretzel, oh my God, I love pretzels. <laughs> I know you do. I love pretzels so much. You're, and you're a pizza pretzel freak. Hell yes. <laughs> Little Caesars, sponsor us. I need that. Which one is better? The one with the crumbly crust or the crunchy crust. I like both, but this one's better. Crunchy okay. crust. <laughs> crunchy crust win, everybody. But I will say this, if you're gonna deep fry steak, do both. Anyway, guys, these are the results. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in anything I use, everything is always in the description down below. One, three, two, yeah.
After years perfecting it, it's finally available for purchase. Cookies Rub. My rub has been the go-to for many of you, and now this new revamped formula is better than ever. It's amazing on beef, pork, lamb, chicken, and my favorite, burgers. This rub is what I use in 90% of everything I cook. Get yours now at shopgugafoods.com. The link will be on the description. Google's Rub, baby. Get yours now at shop.googafoods.com. Link will be on the description. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Take care, buddy. Bye-bye.